And pick is here to save me from my own idiocy as the Nidalee going to be taken away from SOFM. Currently, he's 100% win rate on that champion and 0% win rate on anything else. Uh, sample size of three, so take that as you will. But uh, certainly a good first ban here coming through from Marchi. Well, SOFM, can he do it again? Can he flame horizon his opponent? We'll see if that does end up taking place here again today. Renekton is going to be banned, Atlas, so uh, no excitement for you. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very upset. And it was, the, it was the LPL team that banned him away as well. This is just, I feel like I've been affronted. As uh, the Camille to be uh, followed up by the Lilia here on Marchi's side, just trying to deny as many of these uh, high-powered AP junglers away from SOFM. Certainly a lot more in that champion pool for him. Uh, very exciting jungler at this point in time. Looking forward to what he is going to do. But final ban to come through from Sooning, and it will be the TF. I think Twist of Fate is very, very strong at the moment, but uh, has been banned in our first two games so far. We'll see whether he does uh, get his nose in uh, in the next few for the day. Still a lot of League of Legends to come. Is Syndra going to be first picked very, very quickly here for Mission? Uh, on Marchi's side. He had a little bit of a lackluster Azir game last time out, but uh, certainly did break out onto the Rift much better than I was expecting. My experience from uh, Mission was uh, more about, you know, the other side of the coin um, back when I last commentated his games, which I believe was 2018 Rift Rivals, uh, where they did not do so well, but certainly uh, debuting fantastically uh, so far. So we'll see whether he's going to be able to continue that form here on the Syndra. And honestly, I feel like Mission, if people have been watching his gameplay, what he does with waves and things of that nature, he's been really impressive for a mid laner so far this tournament. He has a seemingly a lot of awareness of what is going on inside of the laning phase and what he needs to be doing and those trade patterns that he ends up taking. So I'm looking forward to seeing him against Angel here today on the Syndra. On the flip side, they have the Ash and the Volibear. Obviously, on Sooning side, there's a lot more control going on inside of the champ select. Bard is coming out. Yep, Brad going to be the lock in here. Prioritizing support for Sword Art. Of course, Sword Art, a phenomenal player throughout the years. Um, have had a lot of uh, experience with that particular gentleman, but you give him agency and he will certainly take it. So Bard, a brilliant choice there for him. Karma going to be taken away, going to try and get rid of some of that uh, that lane presence towards the bottom side more than anything else. As uh, Ash Karma can be extraordinarily difficult to deal with. As we'll see where Marchi are going to be focusing. I have a feeling that Huan Feng could be where their mind is going to go. We've already heard a lot of our analysts talking about how pivotal he has been for Sooning thus far. Also, he's one of our Draven players, so that just makes it really, really fun. Uh, we're not going to talk about the other Dravens that we've seen, because uh, that makes us sad over here in Lowell Park. Uh, Ezreal is going to be the first one to be taken away, and I think this is genius. Ezreal Bard, one of the strongest Bard lanes that you can have. Yeah. Certainly still a lot of options. And Tom Kench getting banned away as well, which is a little bit surprising because Bard X would just be able to have a lot of freedom, even though it's Ash Tom. So that one does strike me as... A bit surprising. I wonder what Machi X wants to ban away next. Okay, it's going to be Wukong removed from one. the table. Certainly will uh, would have been fantastic as far as AOE team fights are concerned, but been certainly been aiming towards a lot more of these split pushes rather than uh, team fight top laners thus far, considering his 66% pick rate of the Jacks. On Feng, though, this is the other bard lane that we've seen a lot of, as uh, Jin's going to be picked into the Ash this time around. And Machi X now hovering Jace as it currently stands, and I feel like that begins to set up for a lot of things. It even begins to set up for Malphite if that gets locked in, and it does. Okay, so Jace likely to be towards the top side of the map as Nautilus. Going to be picked up here as well, very quickly. Looks like a lane kingdom comp to me out of Machi. Yeah, Machi trying to go for all lane dominance with a very easy jungler that can set up ganks. But the worrisome thing for this is that Graves, SOFM, he's just going to be able to power farm and match counter gank everything. And if that ends up happening, Sunan just comes out ahead. So Aurelia is the hover. Okay, it's going to get locked in. 
This could be a very good taxi for Mr. Gallio there to get into these team fights exactly where he wants to. It's Blade Surge, and then you just pop a gargoyle down on top of the lady, and then uh, team fights can work out relatively well. But Marchi are not looking at team fights. They uh, they don't want to look past the laning phase. That's where they want to really put this one uh, in the bag for yeah. the beginning. So certainly look towards Marchi to see whether they can get these advantages very early in this game. And uh, I think despite that, a lot of people's eyes will be on SOFM and where he's going to be in this jungle. It's been very exciting to watch this year. And I'm really glad that SOFM finally sort of has his uh, time in the spotlight uh, to the level that he has uh, this world. He's always been a phenomenal player. Well, Machiax have sort of sealed their own fates. They need to get ahead in the laning phase. And if they fail to do so, things are gonna be rough. I'm very worried because Aurelia, if she just clips Jace once, it's, it's basically lights out for him. She will take over the laning phase and he won't be able to really recover. She is the popular pick into champions like Callista, Lucian, Jace, things of that nature. Yeah. Because of her E, if she's able to just get on top of them with her stacks. And in mid lane, Galio, Syndra, Graves is there to back up Galio. And as long as they can sustain throughout the laning phase, get to level six, all of a sudden Galio is then able to help alleviate any other pressure or create pressure, depending on what Suning wants to do. I just feel like they have so many more gears and a more clear cut game plan, whereas Machi X is really all in on trying to get kills early and lane kingdom their opponent. Well, we'll see whether they can do that. I think Herald is going to be very important for this one as well. So keep your eyes towards that top side of the map and see what Bin's going to be able to do on this Aurelia. I find it really interesting because my mind was going towards picks like a Malphite to really neutralize, whereas Bin was like, no, 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 no. I'm just going to counter kill my lane. And uh, then we're going to be able to take over that way. A little bit more of an aggressive mindset, and I like it moving into this particular game. I think Suning do still have a lot more to show. Looking forward to seeing what it's going to be up against Marchi. Marchi's back's against the wall at the moment. It's feeling like this group is getting more and more clear cut. And if it is a Sooning victory, then it makes it very, very difficult for Team Liquid and for Marchi to try and make their way out. Three ones apiece for both G2 and Sooning, if that were the case. And then one and three for the other two. Still, you know, possible to get to three threes across the board, but not very likely considering what we've seen so far from the group. Not exactly as up in the air as uh, a lot of these others, and especially uh, compared to what it looked like moving in to the uh, beginning of the day. But let's have a look at how this one's going to go. And uh, LS, as we have a look at these comps now, we know what March is aiming to do, but do you think they're going to be able to do it, I guess is my question. I really don't think so, because top lane as well as the junk, like Graves, Versus Volibear, that's an interesting matchup in itself because Graves can choose to go offensive against the Volibear. Sometimes you also see the Ignite come out and things of that nature. But I like what SOFM is doing. He's taking Fleet Footwork on Graves. He should realistically just be able to permanently power farm his own jungle and then just read where Gemini is going to try to appear. And if he just keeps doing that over and over, he'll accrue a very big CS lead. He'll open up Galio onto the map, and then from there, Suning just have so much better scaling than their opponents that I don't know how much he's supposed to win. Yeah, I feel like Suning, as far as uh, compositions are concerned, does look much better. You understand the mindset from Marchi, just don't really consider team fights. If you can smash your lanes enough, then that snowball is going to be enough. But uh, whether they're actually going to be able to do that is going to be the question. And the wild card of SOFM is just so dangerous here on Suning's side, but already. Five breaks out towards the bottom side. Koala, the aftershock's going to wear off, but so are the auto attacks. There's that fourth bullet. Hun Feng really wanting to get that one off onto Marchi. But uh, already the fight's actually breaking out top side as well as Bin. Doesn't have another blade surge. Yeah, at level one, does have that Ionian Fervor stacked up. It's now the first corrupting pot charge is going to go down. This is going to tell us a lot. This top lane is very important for both teams. Yeah, and. Right now, I mean, Aurelia just already showing that she's in the driver's seat of the lane. Still two corrupting potions remaining. Gemini continuing to clear out his jungle, but look at Graves. I mean, this is 
sort of what we were alluding to. He's just full clearing his jungle. The hog shot comes out, gives everyone intel. But honestly, if you're SOFM, you're probably just thinking, well, of course I was doing this. <laughs> so it's not like there's any surprise because again, the onus is on Machi X to get ahead. Looks like Angel actually found himself a recall. No, Mission, I think, pulled the minions to threaten a freeze. So Angel stops his recall. Casting off the mini map right now, Atlas. Yep, this is what you were talking <laughs> about as well, was uh, Mission's ability to control a lane, which has been uh, very impressive. And I'm glad that we've already had that demonstrated to us very early in this game. And uh, that's going to be another lane. I, of course, I think uh, it went without saying that Syndra was going to have a lot of control in the lane against the Galio. Galio's job more to just survive and then be a bit more utility moving into the mid to late game. Koala lying in wait. There's a bear here as well. Koalas, of course, not bears, by the way, guys, just a PSA. Why are they called koala bears then? They're not. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Not a bear. Australia doesn't have too many bears. We've got a lot of weird anim animals, but... We've got kangaroos. We do have kangaroos, that's true. But if that's Ooh. a bear, then I'm insane as Bin. For a blade search, we'll find it as PK offering a fair bit of damage back there. Very nicely done. Evens things out relatively, but this has still been in a lot of control. You can see demonstrated already in the yep. CS as well. This is absolutely not how this lane was envisioned by Marchi when they picked the Jace. No, and... and oh! oh solo kill underneath the turret. Bin's going to be able to take him down, and... Yeah, oh, this, this, this is a disaster this, this, already. The lane's over. The lane is so over. Oh, man. So Aurelio's going to reset. I'm curious what... Bin is going to end up going for as the first item. That'll give us a lot of insight into how he's planning to take his trades and what he's going to do with the lane. Okay, so it is going to be the Vampiric Scepter. So we're not seeing a rush straight into Trinity Force, nor are we seeing a tier two boot rush. Those would basically be the, the options. You'd pick up Sheen and yep. then go into boots, or you would just start powering into Blade of the Ruin King, go boots, or you just outright go tier two boots and then start to get a component item. But looks like he's valuing the mobility and the sustain via the Vampire Scepter. So we're probably going to have a lot of lane freezes and then another kill taking place maybe on level 7. I think it's going to be really hard for PK to resist that. Well, this is uh, the replay of uh, Bin just biding his time, waiting yep. for that Blade Surge, and then just the, the way that you can fish for stuns as well. It's just so beautifully done uh, by Bin on the Aurelia. Yep. Really, really well executed mechanically. Now, both of them still do have flash, but the Vanguard's Edge and Aurelia's ability to approach is just so scary. Well, speaking of which, here's a demonstration. Flash comes out immediately as uh, PK didn't actually have time to use it in uh, that first blood solo kill. But he might the top laner of Sooning is sort of. Might be in a little bit of trouble here as Koala gets himself the Titan's Wrath. That auto attack looked very strange out of yeah. but sort of will keep himself alive and prepare some hot cocoa as well. Has been looking for potentially another tower dive, but if you don't land that W, uh, sorry, the E, then it doesn't even really matter. You just walk away. You can threaten these dives so comfortably on the, the Aurelia. Really cool thing about that tower dive is that Aurelia is not alone there. She has so many of the spellcaster minions as well as the cannon that if Jace tries to reciprocate damage via auto attacks, all of the minions are going to start helping Aurelia, and that's a lot of excess damage that a lot of people don't think about when they're doing tower dives, but obviously players of this level are going to think about that and entertain that. So very close call by PK, managing to dodge it, but his lane is just in a nightmare spot. Yeah, SOFM thinking about a one versus four at this stage as Angel, Unleash Power is going to go down, avoids the scat of the week pretty nicely there. We'll get the Graves to safety. Magical Journey there will remove Sword Art for any, from any danger, but SOFM, he loves danger. He's still chasing after three people that are going to go for a bit of a reset. One thing here towards the bottom side was bought a lot of extra time as uh, Marchi were sort of milling about in the river there. They were able to lock down the Rift Scuttler, but I don't know whether it's quite going to be enough of a prize to save them from this early game that Sooning had provided. Well... SOFM is just going to go back to clear in his jungle now. Close encounter there in the mid lane, but the top lane threat is already there. It looks like Lethality is going to be the route for Jace. It's not going to see any Monimmune 
or Black Cleaver attempt. He might not be wanting to go that route, given that he's behind. He's trying to bait right now. He's trying to make Aurelia think that he's an idiot. Yep. But he's not. He's got a bear. He does indeed. There's the flash forward. And you can see Bin trying to keep himself alive. Koala's here as well. They understood that it was probably not enough to just try and gank the Aurelia. But I don't know whether he's going to be able to survive this one. And he's not. PK will be able to assert his revenge. He called his cousins. Got them to come through and try <laughs> and take him down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really fair fight. <laughs> so, Bin does end up dying. Now, he does have teleport available. He's going to be able to come back into this lane. Not going to be the end of the world. SOFM now in Sword Art over here on the right-hand side. Yeah, Rift Herald will be started, but will be foregone for the moment. Soon with only a small lead at, the, at this current point in time. Largely to do with mission taking a fair bit of control here in the mid lane and also the uh, jungle gap not quite being at SOFM levels just yet. Yep. And Machi, right now they're only down 600 gold. Infernal Dragon, first one on the map. We'll see which team is going to be ending up to get it. Obviously, Machi has not been having the kind of lane success or ganks that one would Oh, the dredge line, beautiful there from Koala. Nicely done. Sword Art just goes back into his journey. Sorry, continue your point. No, you know, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Very rudely interrupting there. It's, you know, it's totally, it's totally, ooh, Buildwater Cutlass. Yeah, he's going to be able to land that stun. Vanguard's edge comes down. You can see PK, he's running in the wrong direction, but Bin have oh! to contend with the turret and does have to flash as the empowered shock blast may have been enough to take him down. Didn't want to take the risk. The wave gets shoved in. He's going to potentially be denied this plate, but it looks like these minions aren't going to be able to take that one down. Ooh. BK is skating on thin ice right now. And so I think because of the proximity, Aurelia got no turret plate right there, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think so. And so that just went into the void. Angel getting poked. To Ooh, that W did not end up hitting that second minion a little bit. Yeah. Definitely a Sag moment. Yep, that is a uh, mission winning lane right there, 100%. <laughs> As, uh, well, we're calling the place a lot here. It's Gemini. <laughs> Turn off that siren, my dude. Is this. Oh, okay, no, never mind. It is going to wear off. I thought we were going to have that another Zonya's bug, but instead it's just like the cops are here for the rest <laughs> of the game. As, uh, oh, no, <laughs> indeed, they are back. As SOFM now thinking about trying to help out Sorta, but I don't think it's going to quite be enough. He flashes out of the wave and Koala is going to be able to lock down the kill. Decent stun there from Huanfeng off to the side, but you can see still Marchia on the aggression. Oof. Great collateral damage as oh. here comes the curtain call. He's searching for Bruce and Gemini, but you can see Koala just going to be tanking this one up. Mission just offers himself as tribute to the last bullet. As uh, Captive Audience, pretty nice there on to Koala. It's Huanfeng. Get some control back, but it shows that uh, Machi, they're not done just yet. Yeah. Sword Art did end up getting caught out, didn't quite have level six, so he couldn't just Bartle himself. Angel tried to come in and save him, but wasn't able to do so. Now, meanwhile, up in top lane, Jace had that, that close call with death, managed to survive, but things are going to get scary again as soon as Blade of the Ruin King is completed. You say get scary again, I don't think it's ever stopped being scary, to be honest, on that top side of the map. See the Aurelia, the, yeah, the Aurelia currently with a 33 CS advantage, very close to the Blade of the Ruin King, and now with the luxury of heading down to assist with this kill onto Shelly. And uh, if that heads towards top lane and puts even more plates into the pocket of Bin, or at least a few plates, doesn't have any just yet. SOFM going to collect the eyes. Now PK pokes his head around. You can see Marchi. All five members are here. Mission has to flash to get out of the Tempered Fate. It's sort out of brilliant. Cosmic Binding to lock up both Bruce and Koala. And Bruce agrees, giving him the thumbs up there. Well, we'll see what ends up happening. Gemini. He's going to have to run away here. The smite does go down as SOFM is going to be pushed back by the threat of Mission and Koala. And SOFM, I mean, he's, he's ahead about 20 CS. He's up in EXP, and once he hits level 9, and the camps are consumed, the camps start respawning, he starts accelerating very quickly ahead of Gemini. He starts getting 35% more EXP per camp that he ends up taking, so long as Gemini's aren't respawning, he's still stuck over there. So that'll be 
pretty interesting. There's always that little mini game that junglers like to try to accelerate towards that breakpoint for themselves and their camps. Yeah, well, SOFM gonna find Koala here as the curve call comes down. That's a great stun. That was incredibly creative. It's Wan Feng. He notices exactly where that dredge line is going, and that is a dead Koala. Oh, I just made myself sad. As now SOFM is going to start off this Infernal Drake and uh, will be the first of the game going over to Sunni. And things are just not really working out that well for Machi X here. And this is actually very akin to the previous game that we just cast Atlas, where Machi X onus is on them to get ahead, much like it was TL. Yep. And even though we're not having the kind of lane, well, actually, we kind of are. Top lane is <laughs> a little bit of a massacre again, yeah. just like in that series. But. It's weird, yeah, you're right. It's, it's very yeah. akin to that game, yeah. Different picks, different regions, very similar outcome yeah. uh, as far as how this game is going. And I did want to, you know, talk to uh, you beautiful viewers at home and just talk about the way that we're talking about this game because we are talking a lot about Suning being in a lot of control and, and winning, theoretically, but the gold lead was not massive by any means. It's just the fact yeah. that Marchi, they needed to have much larger early advantages. Yes. And so despite the fact that the game looked close, it was absolutely not uh, in the earlier stages of the, of the game. And you can see that is only extending uh, towards Suning's favor as this game progresses. It's going to take some uh, mid-game genius from Marchi to try and get them back into this one. They do have pick options, absolutely. But uh, having a look back towards the top side really reaffirms the control that Suning does have. As SOFM uh, does have full vision of what's going on here. His mission's going to steal away the Gromp, but he's going to be turned golden, and the face breaker does come down. Sorry, it's not a face breaker. That's a big old taunt from Angel. Has immediately missions taken down. It is the bear to get rid of the gargoyle. As this magical journey will get Sooning towards Bruce, who flashes oh, over the wall. What? Another cosmic binding. This guy invents physics. Sword Hut, you're <laughs> ridiculous. That was that was truly interesting. As now Sooning, they propel themselves to such a comfortable lead. Oh, koala. Oh no, don't corner the koala underneath the turret. One thing. Okay, that Cosmic Binding isn't going to land, but the rest of the abilities probably will, and SOFM will clean this one up. So Nautilus dead, and this bottom lane out of turret yeah. probably soon to follow as well. Three and a half thousand gold advantage now for Sooning, and hold on! Yeah, we got another solo kill underneath the turret. Bin this time does have to flash, so not necessarily as impressive as the last one. As uh, Sooning, they're also getting to work here on the bottom side, and it looks like this team just has more players on the rift. Uh, than Marchi do at this stage of the game. Everything going really well. We take a look at this replay here. Ben holding the stun mission. I mean, it wasn't even really necessary. There was no chance to kill Ben there. Yeah. And uh, this is mission going down as well. Koala's dredge line was certainly very odd. But uh, yeah, Angel nowhere to go. But it didn't really matter. The rest of Sooning were able to rally together and without the uh, volley bear being there. It's like, how does this happen? Sort of just... Yeah. No, he finds cosmic bindings where they shouldn't necessarily exist. Oh my, and you know what? Boris is, he's seething. Umbral Glaive on Graves. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so if I'm gonna have to flash Ooh. there is Gemini. He ulted in, but Angel. Just goes into his stopwatch. We'll see whether he can actually survive this one. The Tempered Fate gets rid of a lot of the damage there as Sword Art saving the rest of his team. Woo! Justice Punch comes through and oh my goodness, could be an Aurelia party, but no! Unleashed power denies it completely as Mission throws out the gameplay button and Bin says that he can't outplay that one. He's been outplaying a lot, but you can't really do it towards that ability. Is now PK going to get slowed down? The curtains have been called. It gets rid of the minion wave. Is the last shot not going to land there onto Mission? They are still trying to make plays on the side of Marchi, but it hasn't really amounted to enough just yet. 4,000 gold the lead for Suning. Yeah, and I mean, right now, Suning are just in a very comfortable position. They're up 4,000 gold. They have an Infernal Dragon. They're probably getting this mountain, and that's just going to make things that much worse. And you know what I love to see, Atlas? I love to see Trinity Force second after yeah? Blade of the Ruin King, and it does seem like that is where Bean's going with his itemization path. The cheeky dagger there, sort of giving it away just yeah. a little bit. I Pointing agree with to you. It. Yeah. Definitely much better than heading towards something like a Black Cleaver. 
if you are the Aurelia. Just because Trinity Force just synergizes with her so, so well. Hanfeng picking up this, la this uh, lane of minions in the mid lane as uh, Marchi are going to go towards Shirley. Looks like we will be uh, one Rift Herald apiece. That's 20 seconds on the Mountain Drake. And we'll be able to discover whether it is going to be cloudy or oceany today. Well, what are you what are you feeling? It was a really bright day today in school. I'm feeling some uh, earth, wind, and fire. That's what I'm feeling. So I think I'm with you there with the clouds. I think uh, I think it's a very rainy day for or yeah. <laughs> I think it's I think it's gonna be ocean. I think it's gonna be a very rainy day for North America. All right. Well, Koala, that was almost a very cute play out of SOFM, but he may actually just Ooh. no unleash power. Not going to be enough damage there onto SOFM. He had enough grip built up in order to keep himself alive, and we are going to transition into that Mountain Drake that was aforementioned. And unfortunately, this uh, oh! Nautilus is just falling further and further behind. Turret goes Got down it. towards the top side as uh, Bin is 100% out of control. And Sooning, it is in fact the Cloud Drake. I'm glad that we're on the same page there. Correct predictions here. But uh, Sooning not going to be able to find any sort of pincer move towards the mid lane as Bin's taken down Gromps, things like that. So Grompulus removed. Mission going to pick up this top wave, and Bin has been unlocked to get elsewhere on this rift. One minute until the Baron spawns. Probably not where Sooning are going to be looking, but it's still a fact. And right now, Machiax, they're probably... We likely have one more team fight left in us when we complete our second core items before Sooning completes their third. That's probably the timing that they're going to be going for, so... Oh, sort of. Beautifully done. Yeah. But I don't know. I, they're all grouping mid lane right now. This is the TSM Classic. Well, we've got a big flanking teleport here out from the Aurelia. Bin lying in wait towards this control ward. A lot of pings out, Marchi. Understood that something was afoot. And uh, Pika going to go for the face check. They Ooh. do find SOF and the arrow connects! And it is going to be the kill going over to PK. Just a little bit overly aggressive there from SOFM. He does feel like every single camp on the map belongs to him. That one certainly did not. Swan Feng will be able to take this red buff in the meantime. So, a little bit of punishment there out from Marchi, and they will get themselves a bit of respite as a result. Yeah, that's a really good breath of fresh air for them. They're still down 5,000 gold and two very unfortunate dragons. But one of the other flip sides is that it is Cloud Soul. So, the third dragon of this game itself doesn't totally matter. Getting 10% ultimate CDR on Sooning, not really gonna affect the state of the game at 24, 25 minutes. Bin, Bin might die, actually. Yeah, I might be looking for it as he flashes. Oh, oh does manage to grab the kills. Now Gemini trying to fight him off, but the Go. rest of Sooning turn up, and Bin gets out alive. Magical journey taken by Angel. That's gonna get the Galio out of there as well. And take a bow, my friend. That was beautiful. <laughs> Man, he's putting a clinic on. Honestly, the, the, the top laners today, they've been on point. I actually have just been impressed by most of the LPL top laners. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, we've got 369 and Zoom other than Bin. Like, this is uh, very stacked towards the top side of the map when it comes to the LPL. As Mission, he's got an R button and he's not afraid to use it, but not going to find anyone stepping up into range. Well. Looks oh. like mission. Yeah, he's. Uh, oh well. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see the certain item in the inventory of Bin right now? Like, I don't know whether anyone can go anywhere near the Aurelia. Yeah. Trinity they might Force. need Nexus turrets now in order to, to survive. <laughs> You'll need to walk all the way back. One turret not going to quite be enough uh, to avoid getting bursted. As we're going to have a look in our uh, axe replay of the Aurelia managing to do what looked like. Definitely at least the improbable, as somehow he manages to teleport and the Volley Bear not enough to be able to take him down. And everything's just going really well. We look at the inventories across the board. Almost the Zhonya's completed for the Galio. Spellbinder almost ready for mission. Jace continuing to go Lethality. Dead Man's Plate on the Volley Bear. And another Serrated Dirk, actually, for SOFM. So really nice to see this. He might pick up the Yuma's Wraithblade. And then after that, or Ghostblade, Yep. After that, pick up Lord Dominic's regard just to really complement the lethality that he currently has, or 
We've seen the variation where they start going into crit items on Graves after picking up two Lethality items. We'll see where he decides to go, or if this game even lets him get any further than his uh, next Lethality choice. Could theoretically just build all the Lethality items and call it a day from there. I think uh, Edge of Night certainly does have some value here as well. Stop any stray Scatter the Weeks from being a problem, as well as Arrows picking off SOFM. That has happened already this game. Rapid Fire Cannon completed by Huan Feng who's just looking for an Infinity Edge to complete his uh, trinity of uh, crit items as the dredge line just going to go wide. SOFM takes that as an invitation as Bruce is going to get caught out by the Tempered Fate. Sword Art getting into position, does find the Cosmic Binding, but not the stun. Gemini has to flash to get himself out of the way as Angel almost takes him out with oh. a Proto Belt as there's the heroic entrance, but SOFM is already dead. Two-man taunt comes through from Angel, though, who's looking to save this team fight and bin dashing around. Is he able to find Koala is the question. He's tanking up the turret. Angel grabs that aggro as Sword Art will be able to soak the Shock Blast to keep his Gargoyle alive and soon and keep pushing forward. And a really, really, really close encounter right there. They were able to get Graves right before he released collateral damage, which would have added a lot to this team fight. Some more members on the side of Machi would have probably went down. At the end of it, they're going to have their jungle stolen away. Cloud Dragon's going to be captured by Jin. And the gold lead's almost 10,000. Yeah, and uh, we've seen SOFM get caught twice already, just by himself, and uh, also, well, I guess not by himself in that last team fight. However, he was popped very early. But you have a look down at the CS numbers. He's 50 CS in the lead. This guy's two levels above Gemini. He's 100% doing his job, making this volley bear as useless as possible. So let's have a look at this fight one more time. Angel played this one beautifully. Yeah, I mean, they just get in there now. Fortunately, Koala does lock up Graves, and Mission is able to bring the kill onto SOFM before he adds any chaos to it. But no matter what, Sooning, they just march forward with their wallets. Yep. This is uh, starting to get to a very heavy wallet situation, absolutely. It's mission back on the rift. You can see PK off to the back, but he's got a couple of lethality items, but doesn't really have much use here in this game. As Angel might have been caught out. There's the Tempered Fate going to land only onto mission as Justice Punch is interrupted oh, by Angel. Koala. Angel does go golden with his Zonyas as SOFM is going to get dredged. But you can see now Bin finding his way into this fight. The Vanguard's Edge comes out. That's going to be that first kill as the Unleashed Power does basically Ooh. nothing to Bin. Avoids the scatter of the week with the stopwatch. And he's going to be able to walk out of here for now. SOFM looking to try and flank, but the volley is going to slow him down. Teleport comes forward as the fourth shot does a lot of work onto Mission. And now who's chasing who? Is Angel full health now as he comes back into the fight? And SOFM over with the Blast Cone. That is going to be a dead Bruce. And how much more can Sooning gather? As Koala down to 200, PK tries to find one, but SOFM not going to be falling down this time. Scatter the Week avoided expertly by the rest of Sooning. The Magical Journey comes through. Bin the one that's very, very comfortable dashing on forward. And that is going to be the chase down onto Koala. Bin not going to be able to find it. That is going to be the execution as Nautilus does go down. Well, seems like Sooning now, they're going to pick up the Baron. This will almost persist into the Cloud Soul as well if they don't manage to end with the Red Bull Baron power play. We'll have to see what they do manage to get with it. Yep, three minutes now of uh, split push heaven for good old Bin here towards the top side. Let's see whether they're going to be able to stop him. I don't, I don't know how it's going to happen as we're going to have a look at this one once again. Angel just saying no to death. This is definitely a pretty interesting team fight because I felt like Mission had such a good performance in it, and he was really helping push back Sooning that we're in such a commanding spot leading up to this whole fight. And Machi, I mean, I they mean, had a really good team fight, all things considered. Just didn't quite have enough in the end, especially not when Angel re-teleported back in. Yeah, and I, I'm really glad that we uh, did focus on the replay. However, there was a double kill that happened in the picture-in-picture. Picture. I know you guys could have possibly seen that one. 
And that's been grabbing a quick couple. Bruce oh. going to be turned gold here as well by Sword Art. That's the double taunt beautifully done by Angel. And this will be the ace completed by Suning. This has been a massacre start to finish. Has been very close to falling just there. Did manage to nullify a bit of that damage, I guess. But now he'll be able to stack up that fervor and get himself home. Teleport is available. And it looks like Suning are going for the end here at 27 and a half minutes. Gemini has respawned. Mission going to be up very soon as well, but the Nexus turrets won't. As Ben has made his way back through, does have himself a Guardian Angel as well. That's going to be a great knock up there onto the Volley Bear. The taunt to follow through. That's going to be an afterthought kill onto the Volley Bear. As Mission says, well, I'm going to spend some time on the fountain. And Suning say they're moving to 3-1 and one, as we have two teams at 3-1 and one now in Group A. And oh man, this is a day of domination basically happening. Game number one, yeah. game number two, very identical almost with one another in terms of how both of these two teams that are standing now victorious on the day manage to conduct themselves and just overcome everything that should have happened in the early stages of the game and completely tell a different story. Yeah, exactly. It felt like top lane dominance uh, into a lot of 